Okay. Well, we're fresh off the Olympics. Everyone's riding the high. I loved watching the Olympics in Paris the last couple of weeks. And here's Patrick Tui to rain on everyone's parade from the <laughs> Show Me Institute on KCMO and just ruin the fact that uh, these Olympics typically turn out to be economic busts. Uh, they're coming to Los Angeles in 2028. And then I think they're going back to Salt Lake for one of the Winter Olympics in the early 2030s. But um, what does it come down to when it comes to economic impact of these events, Patrick? Well, they don't they don't generate a benefit to the city that hosts them. Uh, the cities pour in so much money constructing new venues, security, updating their infrastructure to anticipate thousands of people visiting. And then when those people leave, oftentimes that infrastructure is just left to rot uh, or it's not certainly isn't used uh, as frequently as as it was during the Olympics. The the exception uh, was the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics, where um, Los Angeles made about two hundred and fifty million dollars. Apparently, uh, that's in a budget of twenty two billion. Uh, but it was because they hosted without building all that new infrastructure. Yeah, if you already have it, right? right? They used existing, uh, you know, uh, arenas and things like that. Uh, but cities aren't doing that now. They're building all new. So I am uh, confident that just like Paris seems to have uh, it, it been a cost to them. Los Angeles, it will be a cost. It will be a huge inconvenience for the people who live there. And, uh, you know, I laugh at the beginning of the segment because uh, you paint me as kind of like, oh, here I come to rain on people's parade. The Olympics are such an incredible opportunity to look at individual achievement. And yet we let these shysters in who promise all this economic development to cities and kind of ruin it for the people who live there, like just... Just stick to the basics. Just host. Just celebrate that. Don't think you're going to make money out of it. Don't pay all these developers. Don't pay all these consultants. Just enjoy it for what it is. But cities, time and again, fall for these uh, hucksters who come in and promise uh, the sky and then never deliver. But in the case of L.A., they're not going to use what they've already got available? Well, I don't know what their their plans are. Okay. Uh, Hopefully, they will uh, avoid uh, hopefully they will avoid uh, building all new stuff. But I am confident that the city is probably, again, I'm, I'm guessing here, but the city is probably looking at a lot of uh, deferred infrastructure maintenance over the years, things that hasn't kept up, that now hosting the Olympics it wants to uh, speed up on and, and bring up to uh, standard. So maybe there's some of that infrastructure. But again, hopefully they avoid the building new stadia, building completely new infrastructure just to serve one event that you know at the end of a few weeks is over and the locals are stuck with the bill but it's it's just kind of what we see with these sports events yeah i mean if you google like rio olympics and what they built down there and what they do with them now i mean a lot of them are deserted oh right and that's all over the world you can find uh, pictures of the former olympic studios in china and russia that are just crumbling and abandoned and it's it's amazing. Now, you know, those countries are command and control economies. They do whatever the leader tells them to do. And so maybe for a few uh, weeks they wanted to show off, you know, the brilliance of uh, socialist uh, uh, economics and engineering. But uh, for those of us who live in the real world, um, it's such a bad deal. So, I'm, you know, I, I want to be optimistic for L.A., but I hope that they learn the lesson of other host cities and learn the lesson of what they did in 1984, which was less. There's one less. outlier here, though. Lake Placid, New York. Have you been up there? I have not. Okay. And that's where, of course, Miracle on Ice. But without the Miracle on Ice, it's probably in the same boat. But because it still has that historical notoriety, having been up there a couple of times, the whole town is based off of tourism to go see all the locations from the Miracle on Ice. But, you know, that's 45 years removed now. So even that's going to lose its luster eventually. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And and, and it's again, it's not just the Olympics. It's, you know, and kind of the reason why I want to talk about the Olympics, both the, the ones just completed in Paris and the ones coming up in Los Angeles is because I want to to let people in Kansas and Missouri know that when they talk about building stadia for teams here mm-hmm. uh, and, and when I say that it's not a bad deal, I'm not being specific to to our location, to our region. I'm not being specific to those two teams. This is true all over the country in all sorts of events. We are promised this huge economic impact if we just spend a bunch of public money and it doesn't work out. And if it doesn't work out for Olympics, which legitimately bring thousands of people from around the world into your local economy, if, if, 
If that can't turn a profit, what hope is there for a football stadium that hosts, you know, 11 games a year or something like that? And and that's why, you know, I'm actually okay if the Olympics just kind of keep bouncing around between the same places if they already have the infrastructure there, because then it might actually make some sense. I read an article that suggested, and, and maybe this is a movement, that maybe we just pick one location, maybe make it Greece host the Olympics there every four years, build, have the world pay no, to no, build no, the don't, infrastructure. Don't give those bums every, don't give it every, <laughs> but I'm saying have one in, uh, you know, North America, have that one location maybe on each continent that works for everybody, rotate it every 20 years, and then you're done. That's it. <laughs> that would be better, I think, than what we have yes. now, which is cities uh, taking it on the chin to build so much and, and then lose their shirts. Now, in Kansas City, you mentioned the stadiums, but what about the World Cup? We've got that coming. You know, some have suggested it's going to be streetcars. We're going to have more streetcars as a result. We know that's getting built right now. Do we need some kind of transportation train thing out to Arrowhead by then? Like all these just dumb ideas. (laughs) What do we need to be thinking about with the World Cup coming in a couple of years? Well, again, people just need to consider what are the things we are going to spend for the World Cup and what is the benefit to us now? A lot of boosters for these types of events, including the Chiefs and Royals, talk about municipal pride. You and I have talked about that before. It's great PR to host something like that, and that is absolutely true. However, what is the financial return of a, of a week of good press? You know, nobody uh, moves here because we host uh, a Taylor Swift uh, concert. Nobody moves here because we host a sporting event. They may come in, maybe we get one or two headlines, but there is really no economic impact beyond that one particular day or weekend. Um, and yet, when we look at the economic impact of that one particular day, uh, it, it's a wash because of what we spend, because of what we spend on security mm-hmm. to protect athletes, to protect fans. It's uh, what we spend on policing because of infrastructure. It's what we spend on bus routes. We're not going to earn any money on the streetcar because the streetcar is free. Uh If we earn money on hotels, it's not going to be as much as people thought. Because let's say, for example, the hotel occupancy rate when we have an event is 90%. Well, without that event, it probably would have been in the high 60s. So again, it's just maybe that 20% gain. That's something. But oftentimes, that something that a city gains is not justified by the expense elsewhere. And that's that's what economic developer experts won't tell you. They don't talk about the expense elsewhere. They only talk about the, the, the money coming in that's new. I don't want to put you on the spot, but the, the Port KC deal, how unique is that to Kansas City? Uh, with, with the current, you mean? No, the, 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 the organization Port KC. Oh, it's not, it's not unique. And, um, and just tell people what it is. So basically what uh, Port KC is kind of a quasi-state local institute uh, organization. And what it allows uh, organizations to do, what it grants, is that we're going to help you get out from having to pay your state and local taxes. So we're going to package a deal together. All the state and local taxes that are generated are going to go back to you. Uh, so, for example, the current down by the riverfront, if I'm correct, uh, Port KC yeah. got in on that. And so the developers built the stadium and then have rights to all the development going on around it. That's really where they're going to make their money. And again, it's it's not unique to, to soccer. Baseball is the same way. These guys want to build a stadium, but then own all the property around it and use the, you know, uh, uncommon sporting event to drive business at their bars and at their hotels. And what Port KC does is say, says, we're going to give you all your taxes back. So again, you and I drive past it. It looks nice. It looks exciting. But from a kind of uh, public income spreadsheet point of view, it doesn't exist. It's yeah. a zero. We're not making money off of this. And yet we have to support the police and the infrastructure that that help these institutions, help these uh, uh, construction projects do. So it really becomes a net negative. Oh, it absolutely becomes a net negative. And this is this is the my favorite part of these organizations, especially in, in liberal cities, uh, because what they are basically saying is taxes are too high. And if we can lower your state and local taxes to zero, we can spur development. Well, no kidding. Every yeah. conservative, every small government conservative already realizes that we want to lower taxes for everybody. But what these guys will say is, no, we just want to lower taxes for a few people who, you know, may coincidentally contribute to our 
election. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, who uh, are uh, donating to the right folks. But they would never what say. What a shell game. If you go to uh, uh, Quentin Lucas or you go to uh, people in St. Louis and say our tax is too high, they would say, no, 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 taxes aren't high enough. Yet when you look at their economic development corporations, yes. their port cases, they are constantly cutting people's taxes. He's Patrick Tuey with the Show Me Institute. Great stuff, man. Thank you so much. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thanks so much.